All right. Welcome, everyone. This is the Wide World of WordPress events, and we are here to talk about what WordPress events are, uh, so types of WordPress events, and what to expect at these events, and we'll share some resources about WordPress events with you. My goal is to keep this discussion within the hour, so that said, here's what we won't be talking about today. Uh, we won't be talking about setting up a WordPress site or providing support with any WordPress site issues because um, we're here to talk about events. So let's get started. What are WordPress events? What do we mean when we call when we say WordPress events? So to put it concisely, WordPress events are where WordPress people can connect with each other, learn together, and contribute to the WordPress project. There are many types of official WordPress events. So these include the most commonly known meetups and WordCamps, but there are also contributor events. There are kids camps. There are the um, hackathons that we have called Do Action. And there's also open source workshops. So we're gonna take a closer look at these uh, great programs during this session. First, we have um, meetups. So I'm uh, just curious if um, anyone in the chat, um, if you have attended your local meetup group, um, or if you've never attended one, feel free to uh, let us know in the chat. It's a bit quiet, but uh, <laughs> uh, feel free to chime in at any time. So I will hand this over to Devin to chat about uh, WordPress meetups. All right, thanks, Courtney. I believe everyone here has, to some extent, in WordPress meetup offline or online, right? In fact, some of us here are probably meetup organizers. So um, I just like to say thank you so much for growing your community and always making the best um, effort to gather WordPressers in your area. WordPress Meet, currently we have about 700 chapters across the globe. Um, uh, WordPress Meetup is a local uh, end that we encourage uh, WordPressers to um, organize. Um, and what uh, we think a successful WordPress meetup is if it happens consistently. So two people gather, talk about WordPress, um, and announce it on meetup.com is already an official WordPress meetup. So you are free to organize this event, and everybody, everyone uh, is also free to join and attend. Um, and you probably are more familiar with a lecture type of um, WordPress meetup, uh, WordPress meetup event. It actually an event that you can um, experiment with. You can have a brown bag discussion or a co-working or a workshop. You can teach how to create in uh, or themes or blocks uh, these days, right? Um, you can also, um, you know, earlier, Courtney mentioned about do action. You can actually um, organize a WordPress and, uh, in do action form. Um, so there's a, a, there's a lot of options and opportunities that you can um, try organizing WordPress meetup. In fact, recently in Tokyo, um, folks organized a photo. Uh, I don't know how you call it, but you photo hunting yes you do four things where you actually upload and and for the walk that's there you go um um where you can uh, upload it to the wordpress photo directly you get a badge for that so it's there's there's a lot of option for you to um to do that so yeah um i'm i'm here to represent the project globally that we are doing this uh, meetup reactivation project we have also O'Neill here from the Philippines who has been supporting the project 
where there's still a lot uh, to do because still many dormant meetups, but the challenge now is also um, keep these reactivated meetups to stay active. So if you have any ideas, you have any um, uh, concerns, in fact, please let us know and let's, let's work together to keep um, our community active growing. Yeah, back to you, Courtney. Great. Thanks, Devin. Um, yeah, so as Devin mentioned, we have the Meetup Reactivation Project. And if uh, there is no local meetup group in the area, you can always apply to start one. Um, and we, let me share those links for you in the chat. That link, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and feel free to share this with folks too. Oh, the chat is a bit disabled. Uh, I just got a message from Oni. Hence, we see a quiet chat room. Let me check. Yeah, it says, oh, there we go, chat. Can anybody try at us on the meeting chat? So that, sorry oh, about yay! that, folks. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Hello, I think Omi, when... Rio. <laughs> I am and... so sorry about that, folks. Keep chatting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, keep chatting. Phew. Please. Yay. <laughs> yeah, we had a little bit of a, a Zoom hiccup because Zoom updated recently and um, all mm. the settings <laughs> reset. <laughs> okay, so... Thanks for your patience there, folks. So we're going to move on to talking about WordPress uh, or WordCamps, excuse me. So WordCamps, what are WordCamps? They are informal community organized events uh, that are put together by WordPress users just like you. Um, everyone from casual users to core developers participate, share ideas, and get to know each other. And so what makes this different from meetups is that they tend to be larger events with more attendees, multiple sessions, and sometimes over multiple days. So I have a question for everyone here. Have you attended a local work camp or have you traveled to attend a work camp um, or both? Uh, please let us know in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. I know that there are quite a few folks uh, that are present that have probably done both. <laughs> um, I would say, oh, O'Neill just attended his very first in-person meetup last weekend. That's great. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since uh, I've been to an in-person <laughs> meetup myself. Um, and uh, those are starting up again. Meetups have been largely online for the past few years because of the pandemic. So. Um, and let's see, Black Ace says, haven't attended any yet. Well, I'm glad you're here so you can learn about um, events. Um, Nauco's first in-person meeting post-COVID was in December and another one coming up at the end of this month. Fantastic. Yeah, the last uh, WordCamp I went to was WordCamp US, which was in San Diego um, in the fall last year, so. Uh, so let's move on, move forward here. So let's talk more about WordCamps. The first WordCamp was in 2006 in San Francisco. Uh, were you there, Nelko? <laughs> hey. Yeah, um, I, I think I volunteered. Um, oh, you were there? Maybe 2010, yeah. 2007 I was there, but probably yeah. not the first one. Yeah, and it was small. I mean, the first couple of WordCamps were small, it was just... Uh, this room full of people that you see in this picture here um, and a very young looking Matt Mullenweg here. Uh, so that was in 2006 um, and over, I, I think this number is probably outdated now, over 1100 WordCamps have happened worldwide since then. I know that we've had a few since I created this presentation. Um, but this is just a, a fun fact that I wanted to share with you all. Um, so the types of WordCamps we have, we have our local WordCamps. So these are the WordCamps that gather a local community and sometimes with visiting speakers. So they highlight uh, the, their local WordPress um, people there. 
Um, these are the bulk of WordCamps that you'll see listed on the WordCamp schedule. So that's at central.wordcamp.org, right? Um, and actually, I could let's see, we could share that link with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Noko. And on the right, we have a picture uh, of an example of a flagship or regional WordCamp. Um, that's WordCamp Europe. Um, but so all flagship and regional word camps are word camps are on a much larger scale than the local word camps. Um, the one on the left there was uh, word camp Harare in like um, 2017 and it's in Zimbabwe. So that was like about 75 attendees. The photo of word camp Europe on the right there was over 2,700 attendees. So both of these are word camps and both are valuable resources for the WordPress community. Um, so both um, WordCamp Europe, as well as WordCamp Yes that I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, those are the well-known flagship WordCamps. But this year, the very first WordCamp Asia will take place. Um, and we happen to have some of the organizers here from WordCamp Asia. Mm -hmm. So um, Nalco, could you tell us a little bit more about what folks can expect at WordCamp Asia? Sure. So uh, WordCamp Asia is happening this uh, February in uh, Bangkok, uh, Thailand. Uh, the dates are 17th to 19th February. And uh, it was canceled in 2020. Uh, the first uh, work camp canceled by uh, COVID-19, but we are regrouping to host this first uh, flagship event in Asia. Uh, the reason why we are organizing this, uh, despite, you know, we've been, I've been to US, Europe, uh, got inspired and the idea of Asian work uh, word camp, uh, flagship word camp came together because uh, many of the attendees have a unique uh, barrier to go to word camps in Europe and US. Uh, visa issues, uh, time, money, and time zone, even you're in joining uh, live stream. So we wanted to uh, create a place for Asian attendees to be easily um, um, be able to gather. So our goals are to make it like a community event that inspires Asian community to grow even further. So yeah, that's the goal. And if you are joining, uh, that would be great. And we, we have Onio also is a uh, organizer that, who is joining here. And Hajime is uh, one of the speakers, uh, panel discussion speakers. So we'll see you there. And if you're not um, coming, you can uh, watch us live stream. Three tracks are going to be live streamed uh, real time. So this time zone friendly time. So oh, fantastic. Yep. Great to hear that. Well, thank you. Thanks, Nanko. Um, Looking forward to that, um, especially live stream. I'm glad that there will be one. Um, and I will attend to the ones that I that I that overlap with my time zone. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yeah. All right, so back to just talking about WordCamps in general, I'd like to share a, um, a typical WordCamp schedule with you. So usually it looks something like this. Um, you begin the day at registration to pick up your badge and possibly some swag. Um, so if you have time before opening remarks, you can browse the sponsor area and say hello to folks that help make WordCamps happen. And usually the first official session of WordCamp is usually a, um, a welcome and opening remarks uh, from the organizers. So they will tell you what to expect over the course of the WordCamp, where to go and what to do, et cetera. Um, and then everyone heads into morning sessions. These are typically about 45 to 60 minutes long with some brief breaks in between each session. Um, some WordCamps will choose to have multiple tracks of sessions, so sometimes you have to make a hard decision on which session you want to see at a particular time slot. Um, and then after morning sessions comes lunch. Uh, if um, your WordCamp is a day-long WordCamp, um, almost all day-long WordCamps will pro be providing lunch for their attendees, and that's included in the ticket price. Uh, sometimes that means the meal is catered by the venue, but sometimes you'll see food carts or food car uh, food trucks at WordCamps, um, or you'll see some WordCamps giving attendees a gift card for a nearby lunch spot. Um, after lunch, the afternoon sessions will take place, similar to the morning sessions, until um, it comes time for closing remarks. Closing remarks are a nice opportunity um, 
to recollect ourselves, wrap up the day, and thank everyone for, for coming. And finally, most WordCamps choose to host an after party once the day has concluded. Again, this is all included in your ticket price. Uh, this can take many different forms. It can be as simple as a happy hour hosted at the same venue, um, or you can be having snacks or drinks at a nearby restaurant, um, or even a fun activity such as a museum or a musical performance. It's all up to the organizers. Um, after parties are, of course, a great place to meet and network with other WordPressers. And um, so what kind of sessions will, would you expect at a WordCamp? So sessions can take many forms. They can be presentations or lectures, um, including lightning or flash talks. So these uh, lightning or flash talks are short presentations that are usually just a few minutes long that cover a single specific idea or topic. Um, I think the longest I've seen a flash talk or lightning talk is like 15 minutes at most. Um, another example of a session is a panel um, or a roundtable discussion or interview or an AMA, which means ask me anything, uh, where uh, folks sit down at the um, at the front and just answer questions, um, in no particular like presentation. Um, and so that's a great opportunity for folks to connect with the presenter. Uh, there are also workshops as well as networking events. So any of these will make a valid free camp session. Um, has anyone seen any other types of unique sessions at WordCamps? Um, other than you know what we see here listed as examples here. Um, I'm trying to think. It's been a while, so I'm like, what's a what's a cool event? Can you you two think of any? um quiz maybe yeah oh a quiz yeah those are always fun yeah as long as it's word wordpress related it it will count um quiz sounds fun i would totally do that <laughs> um aside from sessions uh what else can you do at a word camp um Aside from you know just sitting and watching talks you can um browse the sponsor area um which I mentioned at the beginning, um, th those are the sponsors are the folks that help make WordCamps happen. Um, and they often have uh, resources to share as well as swag. So everyone likes to go around and collect all their goodies uh, from their from the sponsors. Um, there are often what we call happiness bars or help desks um, at many WordCamps where you can go and get help with WordPress from folks in the community. Uh, and there are our social events like the after party. Uh, sometimes uh, if a WordCamp is on a weekend or if it's multiple days, sometimes there are outside activities that, um, that people choose to do. And finally, uh, what we call the hallway track is the most popular track <laughs> at a WordCamp. Um, it's where folks hang out in the hallway, like you see here, and just chat and network with each other. Um, it is... Uh, one of the, like I said, one of the most popular ways to spend your time at WordCamp. Um, and I think that's all we have on, on WordCamps. And I think we're going to go move on to contributor events. And I'll hand this over to Naoko. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It looks like a photo that I took. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Uh, contributor events are one of my favorite part of WordCamps. And it, this is a place where you uh, join in usually in like a, this kind of uh, classroom or like a workshop uh, setup and you sit down, open your computer or you sit down to chat and uh, work on WordPress project as a contributor. Uh, but even if you've never done anything like that, it's a great place to find out what the contribution is about and learn from someone in person. So that's a great uh, opportunity for you to just come, show up, and learn about what it's all about. And if you're a more experienced uh, contributor, uh, this is a rare opportunity to meet in person and talk about the uh, work you are, you've been doing. So um, that's why people really like joining and um meeting people because uh during sessions you don't get to talk to people so much and this is a good way to get connected and network also uh there are uh there are 
they can be standalone events or part of WordPress or uh, WordCamp or Meetup events. And uh, uh, when it takes place, uh, it usually is called Contributor Day, but sometimes they have uh, accessibility event or translation event. So it could be any name, it could have any name. Uh, there are 21 different teams that you can contribute as a uh, part of open source project. And you will, uh, whatever skills or experience uh, background you have, you are sure to find a team that you can contribute to. So don't be afraid and come join. Yay. And yeah, there'll be a contributor day at WordCamp Asia, is that right? Yes, yes, we are expecting uh, 600 or more people. Oh, that's great. And how many teams will be represented? Uh, yeah, know? over 21, as long as we can find uh, uh, who we call table lead, uh, someone who mm -hmm. teaches how. So over 20, hopefully. Fantastic. Oh, thanks, Naoko. Um, so next we have uh, youth events or kids camps, and um, we have Devin to talk about that. Yes, um, so I have actually never been to any kids, but this is something that uh, has been experimented, done in, I think, America and Africa. I'm not sure whether we have done it in, in Asia. This is an opportunity for folks who are interested in uh, investing in the future generation of WordPressers in your area. So as Contributor Day, this can be attached to the local WordCamps or it can be a standalone event where you basically introduce WordPress to uh, kids. Um, the curriculum or the content would be based on um, the ability of the, I, I would say, facilitators or um, um, interest of the the participants uh, in your area so it um it it's it's be a kind of casual event uh more about uh, engaging the younger generation uh, the future generation the young folks um of oppressors in your area so yeah um if anybody has um uh tried this in your uh local community or thinking about organizing one um, let us know. Uh, it will be great to hear that there's um, folks trying to um, investing in the future generation of WordPress. Thanks, hey. Connie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is Ah, excellent. I didn't know that. I didn't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mostly heard about them in North America. Um, we have an example photo here from WordCamp Phoenix. This was, well, <laughs> this was uh, probably let's see, 2011. So that's like almost 12 years ago. These kids are probably um, young WordPress professionals now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, those are fun. I've seen, I've, I didn't attend since, uh, but I observed a uh, kids camp. Um, I think it was in Miami um, and seeing what they do with it is, is a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah. Um, so the next type of event that we have is uh, called Do Action. And so these are hackathons that are organized by the community, just like um, meetups and WordCamps. Um, so these events focus on using WordPress to give uh, charitable organizations their own online presence. So each Do Action event uh, will include participants from the local WordPress community that come together to plan and build brand new websites for a number of local organizations in one day, usually one day. <laughs> uh, so it's a full day event. Uh, so the goal of Do Action is to support these charitable organizations by giving a, them a fresh and dynamic online presence. Um, having this enables them to get on with the work that they already do so well without basic website management getting in the way of their productivity. So these are very worthwhile of events to to go to. Um, fun fact <laughs> that um, I learned last year. Uh, so why is this called Do Action? Um, so with Do Action being a, a WordPress focused event, it made sense for the name to come from WordPress itself. Uh, Do Action is a function that is used throughout WordPress core. 
And the name of the function really fits well with the goal of the event to allow the nonprofits to ramp up their own activity and really get down to business. Uh, and I think this is our last type of event, um, the introduction to open source workshops. So um, we don't see this as often. So it's the probably the least known um, event that you see happen, but um, open source 101 workshops uh, spread knowledge and understanding of the open web and open source through these two hour training events. Um, these events are financially supported by the WordPress Foundation and they're staffed and organized by local communities. Um, the workshop is available on Learn WordPress, so learn.wordpress.org, um, and that is there along with a lesson plan for people to use in their local communities. So as Devin mentioned earlier, you can run this as a part of your, uh, your meetup event, um, or your meetup group, excuse me. <laughs> but if you do, um, yeah, it is fully supported by the WordPress Foundation. And uh, we have a quick note on uh, pandemic guidelines. Uh, so Nalco, do you, can you share a little bit there? Sure. So um, I just pasted in a uh, uh, handbook page. So mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, this has been uh, changing over the time. But right now, at the moment, <laughs> uh, the guideline is uh, to basically for the local rules. There's no restrictions from the community team to not have event or to wear masks or uh, having vaccination, those are not required as long as you follow all the uh, local rules. So um, yeah, um, it, just to be careful, but um, the community team is um, happy for people to meet in person as long as it's safe in the, that uh, scenario. Um, so uh, but we still encourage uh, providing masks and hand sanitizers around the uh, venue and uh, uh, as part of SWAG packs, uh, WordPress community support will provide a sticker to indicate, um, you know, if you want, you don't want to be near people without mask, uh, people can wear that uh, sticker to signal their preference. So that's basically what it is now. Great. Thank you. And uh, finally, there are many ways to get involved with uh, WordPress events. So how do you do that? Um, you can just attend. That's getting involved with WordPress events, of course. Uh, WordPress events like um, meetups are uh, largely free. Um, some WordCamps have tickets at an affordable price to cover their expenses. Um, and that depends on the the local um, currency um, on what the cost is going to be. But we try to uh, the community tries to keep it very affordable for people. Um, so if you have time and skills to share, you can become a speaker. Um, you or you can volunteer to help at an event. Uh, you can even become an event organizer. So you can find more information at make.wordpress.org slash community um, about all the ways that you can get involved with WordPress events. Um, but yeah, the first step is just to attend, see, um, you know, see how that feels for you and volunteer, be a speaker. Um, you can just ramp up into that. Uh, the WordPress community will be very happy to have you. Um, oh, something I want, wanted to mention one more time. Um, and if Devin, if you had any more information to share on the Meetup Reactivation Project, I, I think there was an update on that uh, last month or something. Is that right? Yes, um, we are actually sharing um, sort of like um, status updates of the reactivated chapters, but these would be an ongoing uh, projects because um, with, with COVID, still lingers a little bit here and there and new variants we need to be in full of folks who are probably not comfortable so um what i wanted to say when we say about reactivation is not we are pushing people to meet offline like in sen but we also uh, appreciate if you keep your community active by meeting online and we do have um account that we can share with you all to do that um, and it can host to 100 people. Um, and if 
you've also um, um, thinking of moving forward, me person, and it's uh, a venue support. You can also um, and us a um, you can there's a form that you get out and then reach out to us, send us um, a, a message, an email um, to support at WordCamp dot org. Um, if anything you wanted to um, share with us, you need our support, anything to keep your uh, community um, active again and get it about meeting um, as WordPressers. Thank you. And yeah, now go share the email to the community team there um, in the chat. So thank you. Um, so I think we went, we motored right through our content there. So we're at the end of um, what we had to share with you. Um, I'm curious if there's anything new that you've learned today as an attendee to this workshop today. Um, and if you'll be attending a WordPress event soon, um, I know that now Go and Devin, you'll be at WordCamp Asia um, and O'Neill. Uh, but folks, if you're be attending your local meetup, um, I'd love to, to hear if you'll be attending soon. Or if there's any of the, these event uh, types that we mentioned during this uh, presentation that sounded interesting to you and you'd like to see happen in your local community. Neil, it's going to be your first WordCamp. I find that hard to believe, but... <laughs> I mean, but also share uh, a few things. We also have local words, um, um, kind of uh, mushroomings. Um, mm -hmm. um, like we have a lot in India. Uh, there's uh, in Kathmandu, uh, in Indonesia, one Gresik. Um, and I think um, in before, right before WordCamp Asia, we'll have WordCamp Cebu uh, in the Philippines. Um, and then after that, we'll have WordCamp Kerala in India. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's more location coming in at the moment and in pre-planning uh, stage. So what I'm trying to say is um, check out local word camps. Um, and if you have um, the chance to attend, attend and as uh, Courtney mentioned, you can attend, you can volunteer as speakers, or in fact, you can join the organizing team of your local word camps, or just be a one day organizer, which we call uh, volunteers. So for organizers, you probably need to make your time before the camp, before the events. But as volunteer, you can commit to uh, contribute only that particular day, what camp days. So check out um, the link that I think earlier Courtney also shared. Um, so it's um, what camp, I think that was up. Um, I might share it again later, um, and also um, talk with the uh, local meetup organizers and um, doorsis get together to organize uh, local work camps with your um, local meetup organizers. If you're not yet um, joining the meetup uh, groups, great. Um... I was just uh, reading uh, a comment in the chat from Richard uh, that this was the same time as the Seattle WordPress group. So he was assuming that they were rebroadcasting this. Um, I am, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, sometimes I know that some meetup groups do play uh, videos of other workshops um, at their meetup group, but you know, with over 700 meetup groups in the world, um, I, I think that uh, sometimes events are going to overlap, unfortunately, but thankfully we record ours, um, the ones that we have on Learn WordPress. Um, but we'll oh, another thing is a lot of what, uh, WordPress events are published or like announced on the WP-admin uh, dashboard. So right. check out that there's this plugin, the event plugin that you can see on your dashboard. And see, I think the nearest WordPress meetups or what's happening in your area. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, I think I shared a screenshot earlier of the um, the meetup um, 
the WordPress meetups, um, but here is the site, um, meetup.com slash pro slash WordPress. These are all of the, um, the WordPress meetups around the world. So I did say over 700, we have 780 groups now and over 500,000 members worldwide. So that's really impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you are all of it. We are all part of it. Mm -hmm. Now what's that's amazing right. about it? 500,000 people, wow. 113 countries, still none in Antarctica. I always look down there. <laughs> <laughs> We used to have um, up here in Greenland, I thought we used to have one, but probably no longer. Um, you know, that was just a, a fun little diversion there. Um, so something I wanted to <laughs> mention is that we have this uh, survey for, um, for everyone that attends um, and uses the resources on Learn WordPress. Um, and here is a link here, should only take you a few minutes, uh, but the so uh, background behind this is that the, the training team, which um, is the team that puts on workshops like these, does video tutorials that you'll find on Learn WordPress, as well as courses and lesson plans. Um, this team is currently working towards updating the needs analysis for uh, for Learn WordPress, which is a free resource for everyone. So this survey is going to be the first phase of this project, and it will help the training team as we continue to grow and improve the materials that are produced by the community. So if you can take a moment and let us know um, like your learning needs and what um, what types of WordPress learning materials are useful to you. Um, really would really appreciate your input there. And um, your input will help improve the resources that we have on Learn WordPress in the future. So thank you if you're able to do that. And finally, I um, just wanted to say thank you for learning along with us. Um, links shared during this session as well as a link to the recording will be shared via meetup.com so keep an eye out for that message um, and as i mentioned at learn.wordpress.org is where you can join more online workshops and watch some video tutorials um, we're constantly updating that content usually there's multiple new um, bits of content every week so um, and all, in addition, if you'd like to connect with more WordPress contributors like us, um, you can join the Making WordPress Slack. And um, if you have a WordPress.org account, you can easily join. And that's going to be at chat.wordpress.org. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, any input that you'd like to share, uh, you can find us in, in that Slack. Um, do we have any questions or anything anyone wants to share in the chat before we wrap up for today? Um, yes, thank you, Richard. Thanks for doing the survey. That'll be very appreciated. Uh, spread the word too. Share that with your local meetups and um, your local WordPress community. Ah, yeah, so that link did not quite work. So chat.wordpress.org will lead you to the sign up page. Um, this is actually the expanded link. Um, and if you're logged in on your wordpress.org account, um, that should be a fairly straightforward process. And sometimes if you're maybe you created an account and you might have forgotten about it, it'll tell you that you that page should tell you if you have an account. Um, speaking of that, I will be having another workshop in a couple of weeks about WordPress.org accounts, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but otherwise, thank you everyone for joining. Um, and I think that'll be it from us for today. So thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Thank and you, now, Courtney. Courtney and sharing the space. Thank you, everyone. See you in the next event. Yeah, thanks, Nico and Devin, and for everyone else for being here. I'll see everyone. you soon, O'Neill, for the Word, uh, the WordPress Diversity APAC meeting on Slack. <laughs> Busy day. <laughs> <laughs>